Welcome back to the Boss Hijabipreneur podcast. This is episode 75, letting go of your ego to get results. Let's go, sis. All right, let's tap in. So letting go of your ego means letting go of your need to always be right. This is going to get deep, sis. All right. When you're always right, you stop asking questions. When you stop asking questions, you stop getting better. Let's take this idea apart for a moment if we want to start seeing results in all your relationships and of course in your business. Asking questions is about being curious about the answers. When you're curious about the answers, you go looking for what you don't already know. That means that you have to connect with people and build relationships with others. You have to be a student. When you know everything, it's easy to be arrogant, which leads to ignorance follow me. The world is constantly moving and shifting, which means every day there's something new you can learn. When you stop asking questions, it's because you think you know everything or you think you have it all figured out when in fact you don't. And this may be hard to hear. And this is not something that I'm saying to you and only you. This is something that I'm reflecting on for myself. And I'm saying to myself, I'm guilty too. All right, sis. So don't take this as, you know, ego is this bad thing. And I'm going to explain a little bit more. Like Surah Kaf, we read Surah Kaf every single week. If we truly reflect, we learn something new every single single time we read it. Every time we read it, a different ayat may jump out at us and cause a different reflection. These beautiful reflections lead to more questions, more answers, more epiphanies, and more actions to be taken. Let me know if you agree. Leave me a comment on this episode once it airs. So, you know, these beautiful reflections, you know, I think about, you know, the story of the men in the cave or, you know, I think about, you know, um, the story of, you know, Musa and Khidr alayhi salam, right? Um, I think about their stories and I think about, you know, all that they learn about themselves and all that they learn about how to interact with other people. Their story is probably one of my favorite stories with regards to relationships, the relationships that we have with ourselves. I'm going to share a real quick story and this was really around ego and it happened in the boss hijabi society to quite a few of the members where you know the more that they're putting themselves out there the more that they are receiving feedback um, from other people and with receiving this feedback from other people the ego is telling them hey this doesn't feel good the ego is saying hey why am i getting this um you know feedback from these people um you know the ego is saying you know i'm gonna stop putting myself out there or the ego is saying i have to protect myself or i have to you know um, you know, lash out and say, hey, you know, why are you saying this? It's clearly obvious what my brand is about, or it's clearly obvious, you know, what, you know, what I'm trying to put forth. And, you know, after we had a conversation within the group during our weekly mastermind, what we found is that, no, it's not apparent. You know, there were other members of the group that gave their feedback to these different brands and they were like, no, you know, we want the best for you um, in this group. You know, we're praying for you. We're rooting for you. You know, we're supporting you. And it is not apparent to us. It is not clear to us what your brand is about or it is not clear what the focus of your product and or service is. And so the ego will have you, you know, doing and saying things that are to your detriment. Whereas if you kind of quelch that ego just a little bit and you take apart, you dissect what maybe the person or the people are saying or what they're trying to tell you, you will start to see that it's an area of opportunity. It's not saying that you're wrong and you're a bad person. It's saying that, hey, there's a different way that you need to take a look at this, right? So before you throw the whole ego away, there's a healthy part of your ego that we need to keep. Your ego is a natural human asset, right? So your ego is actually an asset. It can be something that is to your detriment if it goes unchecked, but it is a human asset and it helps us to develop confidence and gives us the inspiration to take on our purpose, to be productive citizens and servants in this world. And again, you're not a bad or a weak person if your ego gets in the way sometimes. When this happens, it's an opportunity to recognize what's happening and make improvements. Where does the unhealthy ego show up in your business? All right, let's answer this question next. The need to always be right can keep you from hiring help, a coach, an employee, mentor, or other support staff. 
Ego can keep you from letting go of a business or product idea that's simply not working. Unhealthy ego can keep you from adopting new processes that will help you take your business to the next level. Um, and I've always done it this way. You have this, I've always done it this way attitude. It's been working up until now. Why do I need to change it? Guess what, sis? That's great. But the world and the way it does business has changed. Inside of the pandemic, I don't know how many times I've talked about this, but the pandemic, you know, although we've experienced it for two going on three years, we've experienced the pandemic. The pandemic actually shifted e-commerce business five to seven years, depending on, you know, the expert that you speak to. If it shifted the game five to seven years forward, how are you going to be doing something that you did last year or doing something that you did two years ago? In, in within two to three years, it's already shifted the e-commerce brand. That means that there are shifts that you need to make. That means that you have to move with a sense of urgency as you know the world of e-commerce, as the industry, e-commerce industry is changing, as business is changing. You too have to make some adjustments. You too have to make some changes. So as the world is changing, the way you do business needs to change. What worked 20 years ago, what worked 10 years ago, and again, what worked last year is not going to work today. So I'm going to share four tips to help you let go of the unhealthy part of your ego so you can get results in your business. Here are four tips to let go of the unhealthy part of your ego so you can get results. Number one, know your true values. Ask yourself what you value and why you value it. Once you decide what that is, remove your ego from it. Ego will keep you from building relationships that can benefit you, and it may even put you in a place where you allow people to take advantage of you. Remove ego allows you to find the middle path, aka that balance we always talk about. Number two, know yourself. What types of people, situations, or events trigger your ego? Once you recognize what they are, don't run away from them, face them. Work on letting go. Ego is about having control. Control the controllable, and that's you. Control your reaction and work on the underlying reason why these things or people or situations trigger you. Number three, stop wasting valuable time. Think about how much time you spend proving you're right in scenarios where your ego got in the way. I failed at this thing, why did it fail? And that's a question mark. Your answer may be, I didn't have the right processes in place. I didn't have the right processes because my ego was or is in the way. It's an easy fix though, sis. Removing your ego will allow you to put the processes in place, reframe how you look at this scenario. These old processes served me when they were working. Now they're no longer working. I have to make a shift to new processes that will serve me now. It's not about being wrong or right. It's about using what's best for your business. Number four, stop caring about they. There's they again. They will have you spinning your wheels from now until the end of time. Forget about they and focus on God, yourself, and the people you will impact. What they think of you is out of your control because what they think of you, it has nothing to do with you and everything to do what they think of themselves. So you could break your neck, sis, and do all the things and they will find a shortcoming or two or 10 to say something about. Set your intentions and execute on the goodness of your intentions. Assess your wins and shortcomings from the day before. Do more of what you're good at and less of what you're not. Delegate these things if and when you can. I pray, I pray these were of um, benefit. My inspirational quote of the week, perhaps you dislike something which is good for you and like something which is bad for you. Allah knows and you do not know. Surah Baqarah, Ayat 216. This episode was sponsored by BUNHD LLC and the Boss Hijabi Society, a community for female founders of faith, which includes our 15-week business accelerator to help you fast track the success in your business, everything from creating your LLC to marketing to creating content and so much more. Interested in learning more about Boss Hijabi Society? Head to our website at www.bosshijabisociety.com. Jazakallah khair for joining me this week. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll be chatting about productivity and how to use faith to play bigger. I'll see you soon. Peace. Assalamu